Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. Yep, this is Doki Doki Triple Trouble Part 3. Sorry it took a while to record this, because uh, yeah, I, I had to record another video as well. So yeah, I hope you guys understand it. But yeah, let, let's just get let's get straight into it, you know. We need to get the lore of this story. <laughs> um, you guys are probably wondering like why why was censored? Well, yeah. Remember what happened in uh, the me and you mod? Yeah, I I had the uncensored version and I, I think YouTube didn't like that. So yeah, that's why I had the censor mode in the previous uh, ep episode of this. And yeah, I'm really sorry about that. But yeah, let, let's continue. <laughs> I'll see it to myself. Maybe I'll record my reaction, but I'm not going to show you the whole thing. All right. <laughs> Actually, you know what? You know what? Let's go right now. I want to see. I want to see that. I want, I want to see that. All right. There we go. I put the uh, uncensored mode. So let's go to load and let's go forward. All right. Here's the uncensored mode, guys. Um, this is the part where, you know, the sensor mode was on and they didn't show everything. They even they didn't even show the text you know so i'm still gonna see it real quick how it is but uh, but i'm not going to read it because it's you know a lot of you know lewd words but yeah uh let's just you know let's just go straight for it because uh we gotta see what is going to happen <laughs> hey marco oh hi my mind organizing splits in every direction possible now we'll be joining us in a bit. Cool, cool. How are you doing, man? I find my palms sweaty furiously. Uh, pretty good, all things considered. Oh damn, Kasuya doesn't know anything that happened between me and Atsuki. There's going to be something. Nice, it's good to see someone good like you have things so good. You think I'm good? I oh god, I feel bad for Kazuya now. Oh god. <laughs> I think you're great. Every part of me is crying out for help, but crying out to no one in particular. That's we call of you, man. Don't worry about it. So, so. How homecoming's coming up? Yeah, it is. Homecoming dance. That dance you go to win girls you like and who like you back. Yes, great, great conversation topic, Kazuya. Definitely not a minefield. <laughs> Is there anyone you want to ask? No, not really. That's too bad. Yeah. Hey, boys. Babe. Hey, Nut. Hey, Senpai. Of course, she's openly seductive in front of her boyfriend. <laughs> Natsuki, you do. Are you not like. Are you not embarrassed to say Liti in front of your boyfriend, Kazuya? Come on, like. You Liti. Say. Saying that in front. I mean, near to your boyfriend. Like, I'm, I'm right here. I think he's going to kick my. Uh, you know. <laughs> I can't say bad words. Senpai? I say to myself as my mind races. This is my nickname for him. That I told you to stop using. <laughs> my fingers messes my throbbing head. I duck and hate past me. I trust I, I trusted his judgment you know that you know what? It got me late, so I appreciate that. What I don't appreciate is this situation I'm currently in. Cause he's just sitting there across from me without a care in the world. Meanwhile, that is just openly flirting with him like the last two weeks didn't even happen. Marco, I'm so glad you're joining us for lunch today. Sure, it's fine. Sorry's been missing since September, so I don't have much of a choice. Missing? What happened to her? I just can't find her during lunch. It's been a month of this, so... Oh, I thought she was missing. Never mind. You're an idiot. I'm not an idiot, Nat. Oh, Marco. Kazuya and I both sure quick 
dumbfounded glance before returning to our respective lances. Anyway, that's why I'm here. We don't mind you being here at all, right Nat? I don't know about that, Marcus kind of annoying. Be quiet, you, be quiet you, no one asked for your opinion, he asked. Now rubs Kazuya's arm as they both chunked on my expense. I don't know, I don't know how you put up with her, Kazuya. Well, I don't know, you, you seem to put up with me, this is fine. Wink. You did, you did wink to him? God damn it, Natsuki. The wink sends a cold shiver down my spine. I look down at my f food, seeing the juices of the tomato use all over my sandwich. Memories of the last week begin to freely flood in. I try to shake it off. For a moment, I could have sworn I saw Kazuya, Kazuya staring at me. Are you doing alright, Marco? You seem nervous. Yeah, 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 I'm good. Just thinking about the class stuff. Oh yeah, the upcoming history project, right? Oh yeah, that. Not to mention some other class assignments. I understand how you feel. Yeah, right, Mr. Valed. What the hell is that? What the hell is that word? Build Dectorian can candidate. I hope I spell it right. Well, I'm up to my eyeballs with homework for English, BU, and com com cas comp C. What is that? Is is that like science or something? I, I think so. I don't even know where to start. Go help you if you want. That's a shame that I thought you were multitasking, girl. I capped the sentence off with the slide slave. Smirk. Oh wow, Marco. I resist the urge to laugh as I see Nuts face slowly glow a rich. Uh, I don't know if I can say that word. Ha, funny. Of Scarlet. Kazia looks over to Nut almost like he's a lost puppy trying to find his bone. Don't mind, Marco, babe. He's just being a dumb hole. Your hole is dumb, not <laughs> dummy, um, juicy body, more like it, <laughs> not. That's a little bit inappropriate, don't you think? Come on, cuz, loosen up, we're just messing around. You two are something else, you know, th you know what? You know that? What's that supposed to mean? Oh, I think Natsuki knows. I exchanged a glance with Natsuki, lost on what to say next. Uh, don't worry about it. If you say so, man, I do say so. Because his voice carries a tone of a stand of freshness that I'm not used to. I'm not used to. His eyes peer through me with a steely gaze revealed only by that one of my father. Meanwhile, Nat sits there screwing through her phone, entirely unaware of her surroundings. Oh. Kaz, what is it? I have to go talk to my BO teacher about those assignments I mentioned earlier. I gotta see if he can give me some leeway on the due dates. Can ya come with me? Teachers love it when they see your kiss up face. Cause you laughs for a moment, but he's leer at me my remain fixed. <laughs> Sorry, the Biology teacher doesn't like me all that much, so I won't be any help. In any case, I wanted to spend some time with Marco. You don't mind, right? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> Great. I'll see you later, Nat. She leans in for a small smooch with Kazuya, her leaning stra strategic as it also lays out her fine hole right in front of my face. My attention fades in and centers itself on the wonderful view in front of me. She so finally stands up straight and win one last cute smile as she waves his goodbye. Oh god, here it comes. Kazuya, I can explain. I'm gay. <laughs> I'm joking. The atmosphere. Oh. Four, three, I don't think that's a bad word, right? 
I don't think so. Fitness as I finally return Kazuya's on phase gauge. Hey Marco, I just wanted to say that. It was nice having you say it when we noticed lots again. Huh? Oh, totally man. Not fun to hang out. How? Yeah, hang out, Wind. And you're a pretty nice guy. Right. Do you guys hang out a lot? Um, yeah, sure. You hung out. Hung out. Uh, my god, I can't read today, apparently. You hung out a while ago, right? Oh, uh, well. You're probably one of her closest friends, right? I don't know about that, but we're friends. Kazuya gets up from his seat to take the ventured one next to me. Any friend of my girlfriend is a friend of mine. That's pretty good, being friends with you doesn't seem that bad. I'm glad that you see it that way. As your friend, let me tell you something. Kazuya leans in while gripping my shoulder so tightly that it may crumble like a piece of paper. I see what's going on here, Marco. I'm not stupid and I'm not really afraid of pointing it out either. Pointing what out? I see how you've been looking at her. I see your weird little inside jokes and sl sly s smiles or sleep. I think it's sly smiles which aren't very s subtle by the way. And it's starting to look like there's more between you two than I'm com comfortable with. I think you're a great guy, Marco, so I'm only going to say this once. Stop looking for trouble. Next time, I may not be in a, a generous mood. Oh. Oh, damn. That, that is not good. That, that is not good. I wear my eyes at his theatrical display of br br wait, bravado, bra bravado, I don't even know. He snaps his fingers in front of my face, commanding my attention. My heart starts to race as this primal fear of battle starts rising in me. Every part of me wants to come out and say something, but what am I supposed to say? I've been having f funny time with his girlfriend. If that, f if that fact ever came out, he'd kick my b by hole. I take a deep breath to s to steady myself. Play it cool, man. Sure thing, I'll try. That's what I like to hear. I knew I, I could count on you. Because you have flashes me a f fiercely bright smile as he gathers his belongings and ex Exit the cafeteria. Bye, Kazuya. I don't like to make promises I know I can't keep. This is going to be a long year. Oh my god, I was ex. Oh god, this is interesting. My mind lays empty in the middle of the hallways. An entire school day. Has passed and I still haven't had a coherent thought. Petting echoes through the hallway. The feeling of threat ceases after me. What I'm too caught up with catching my breath from how long I've been running from it. What am I thinking? I got I got laid laid a lot actually. Lead, I think it's lead. I got lead or got laid. I think it's lead. Why am I getting all edgy? I am not a virgin. That's cause of that's cause for celebration. Ignore the violent thread users received and focus on all the cats you've received. <laughs> Glass half full and all that. A poke up my side interrupts my futile attempts to comfort myself. I look down to find the only person bold enough to violent me in just a manner. Hey, yeah, loser. Hey. Come on, dummy. Don't act like you're not happy to see me. That's your job, right? And I glumps down my arm and takes it a uh, prisoner, her, her small body press, pressing itself into my side. You're damn right. Now, what are you doing? 
Relax, little guy. Wait, relax, tough guy. There's no one here. What if Kazuya sees you're, you doing this? Don't worry, he's in the club meeting on the other side of the school. Just to be safe, I put myself away from that to create some distance. Still, I don't want people getting the wrong idea. Dude, what's going on with you? I run a hand through my thread as I take a deep breath. I had a pleasant chat with our dear friend Kasi after you left. Apparently, we were a little too cute at lunch today because he thinks you and I are a little too close for his liking. And I don't feel like meeting the business end over Kasuya's fist, if you catch my drift. Oh, yeah. I leaned onto the uh, wall while cradling my head in my hands. I'm starting to question that we even are at this point. Hey. Small slender fingers tenderly skate up and down my arm. You don't hate that we are, do you? If I knew enough about what we are, maybe I'd actually be able to form an opinion. We're friends. We certain benefits. The model of all mixed signals line up in me as I'm not sure whether to feel satisfied or terrified. What about you keep asking that? He's the elephant in the room. He's just an errant boy. And senpai? Oh god. Oh god. My hands suddenly lift on her skirt, place firmly on her pillow oven her you know <laughs> she is barely centimeters away as the lust in her eyes melt through my defenses do you want to keep going it's up to you my hand falls deeper into the symphony of sensation that is her amazing body the tender rub of her slender fingers find themselves lower than before. Her mighty fruity breath prints itself onto me and the world around us disappears in the fog. Yeah, I want to keep going. Good. Suddenly, our toss is broken. The hardest deadlock snaps me back to reality. See, not nonchalantly walk toward the club while I'm standing stunned still gathering my bearings. I eventually follow her, trying to catch up to where she's at. Not what do you want what do you need now? Did I get you all right up? Do you wanna go somewhere private or something? And a place by the auditorium if you want. No 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 wait wait, we can't do that. Her devious smile nods back and forth. No, not important. Jeez, you told me about your, you know, dad. Hey, Lixne, wait, what is that? Uh, Elxne on the Ede, will you? I don't know what is that, but... Okay, if I want to talk about it, I'll tell you, right? Is this that it's a big deal, man? This stuff is put to you in Wilhelm. I can help if you need or I'll tell you, alright? Alright. Alright. Don't worry, I trust you. If I need anything or anything happens, you'll be the first one to hear. I relent to her as we finally reach the club room. I hold the door open for her, letting her walk in freely. As I walk in, I'm greeted by the familiar smell of ink, paper, and coffee. I scan the room and see Sayu happily talking on the phone, completely distracted. My nose eventually leads me to a steaming cup of coffee next to Monica. Her laptop keeps emitting a clangorous clacking while she fiercely types away. At least they do until she notices us walking into the room. Well, well, well. Yeah, I thought I'd have to cancel this club meeting. And well, well, well. You sure went to go to sleep. Look, you freaking eyes, Monica. 
busy making out in the hallway or something, you two? Monica's all-knowing stare strikes a nerve in me. That, however, remains unbashed. Nice to see you too, Monica. After all, how could we miss coming to this a fun place like the literature club? Her passive aggressive. A troll through the room leaves an impression on Moni Monica who's less willing to speak to us. To speak to us. Glad to know I have a, such a relatable club members like you too. Anyway, I have a college uh, application to fill out, so it's free reading for now. We share poems or something when I'm done. Or something, huh? Spoken like a true club president? Shut up, Matsuki. With that, Monica returns her attention back to her keyboard, more interested in that clacking than our blabbing. Jeez, Monica's in the mood. Don't mind her, this is her usual bull crap met me in the usual spot yeah sounds good and you want to read i don't know so surprise me now walks off to the closet to get that something to read her skirt swiss around us her hips sway side to side showing me a view i've become very acquainted with in my peripheral vision i see sayori waving at me which frees me from nuts Hypnotic sway. Yo, Sayori. Hey, Marco. We haven't talked in the bed. Yeah, I know. I missed you at lunch today and yesterday. In the past three weeks. Sorry, I was helping someone find his classes. Someone? Who's that the summer you went on the phone with? She noticed her hand is still gripping the phone and quickly slides it across the desk and out of view. You saw that? Yeah. Why are you acting weird? Well, Sayori, who's this someone? Sayori's ears written as she puckers her lips, easily a sign that she's hiding something from me. Sayori, what are you hiding from me? Tell me right now. Sayori, it's not a big deal, just tell me. Do you, do you know who Finn is? Hey, hey, is the Finn I know? Is the Finn I know? Hey, hey, if it's Finn, I'm good with it. I'm good. <laughs> I rag my head for any instance of the name Finn, but come up blank. Can't say I do. He's a transfer student. I've been helping ever since he came this September. September? It's been an entire m month, and he still needs help finding his classes? <laughs> well, maybe it's a bit more than just finding classes. A bit more, what does that mean? Oh, um, so, you know. Oh god, <laughs> you can't mean, yeah. No. Yeah, I really didn't expect this. Why not? I'm cute. I can't, I can't get guys. <laughs> god damn it. <laughs> right, are you jealous? N no, no. But is this, you caught me off guard. You're jealous. Okay, maybe a little bit. You're you're my ex slash childhood best friend, so I get to be a little territorial. He's a nice guy, Marco. You two were hit it off. Sure. Finn is a nice guy, even in real life. He is. Respect. Sayori's expression grows more tepid. She slowly approaches me and places her hand on my arms, trying to put me at the ease. Are you okay with me and him? Because I really do need you to be okay with it. Your opinion is important to me. Sure, I guess. I don't really know what to say. Anyway, you look like you're also hitting it off with Nat, so... I hope maybe she'll break up with our boyfriend and see you for the treasure for you are. Suddenly, I get choked up at the, at the mention of her and start coughing violently. <coughs> Never do that again, Marco. Sayori steps back, but then immediately reproses. Yeah, uh, about that. Funny story. You dare what me, Natsuki? Hey, Ixnay on the Antinay, will you? I don't know what that means. What does that even mean? Okay, there's something I agree with Sayori this time. <laughs> 
How does that even mean? Look, in my defense, she came, she came up to me. That doesn't make it better. Please don't tell her that I told you, okay? She leans onto the desk close to her, trying to keep herself together. Of course. Thanks. There's a silence so defeating that the only thing we can hear is the mumble sounds of rap coming from Monica's headphones. And here I was scared of telling you about Finn when you've got your own thing to worry about. Yeah. I can't believe she will do this. This is like her, like, at all. Maybe, I, I don't know. She's gonna break up with Kaz Kazuya, right? I scratch the back of my neck as I see Natsuki by the closet struggling to pick out, pick out one of the books. I don't think she will. Really? And you're okay with that? Yes? Why? I get to have fun things to her, so that's cool. You're telling me that. Mister, I live next to a girl who I was really close to for 15 years and never made a move. Cares about Uno. <laughs> Maybe I was into you like that. This was an obvious lie. <laughs> Marco. What are you doing? My arms fall to my side as my eyelid reaches for the closet again. I nervous gulp slides down my throat as I try to make sense of it all. I don't know Sayori. You're not going to do it again, are you? I find myself unable to look Sayori in the eye as my lips seal shut. You can't do it again. It's wrong. I know, but I'm not sure I want to stop. A pair of small hands find themselves over my eyes. I feel a small body fling onto my back, wind me down. Guess who? N Natsuki? Her hands drag away from my face and see lips off of me, off of me, but I still can't shake the feeling of her on my back. Don't sound so bothered by it. So we b talking about homecoming. I look at Sayori. Sayori winking, that's a Sayori, you're making this worse. I look at Sayori in utter confusion, shooting me one of our well traded uh, psychic look, looks. She signals me to follow her lead. Right, the illustrious homecoming dance. Did you know that Sayori is taking Finn to the dance? I am? You are! Even through this tense situation, a small smile still makes it its way onto Sayori's face. I am. Who's Finn? In a singular moment, Natsuki realizes what's really going on. Oh, no way. Sayori has a boyfriend? Y yeah. I'm so happy for you, girlfriend. Natsuki rubs her arms around Sayori, but Sayori doesn't let her get a good grip. That's kind of weird coming from you. I expected boys are inky or something. I've had a boyfriend for like two months. I've I'm over the whole cutest thing. So he tilts her head and stares me directly in the eye and responds. I shake my head in <laughs> disapproval of her very covert passive aggression. Speaking of which, are you taking Kazuya to the dance? Duh, like who else am I gonna take to homecoming? Marco? She begins laughing up at Storm, yet me and Sayuri main or a composer. Her laughing pitters out as she notes that our mutes don't seem a legend with her. Gee, it was a joke, guys. Don't be so gloomy. Yeah, <laughs> right. Is this like a je jealous jealousy thing? Because I will never make moves on Marco. Sayori, I know you guys have history and that will kind of suck. This was an obvious lie. <laughs> Again. Thanks not so good. I could always count on you. I can't help but be absolutely appalled by now Netri that came out of Natsuki's mouth. It's honestly terrifying to see her lie so plaintively and so convincingly. convincingly. For a second there, even I believed her. Anyway, you mind if I steal him? I found books to read. I don't mind. What about you, Marco? Do you mind? 
since I have in her arms for the end uh, Scrontinous there puts me under a new kind of pressure I probably shouldn't go read with her, especially if I appreciate Sayu's company, but if I change plans on that, maybe she'll be mad at me. Nozick starts tugging me by the blazer when I try to give Sayu another one of our psychic looks, trying to get her to understand. She surrenders and waves at us, getting out of, out of our hair. I'm filled with with an overbearing sense of regret as Natsuki carelessly drags me to the ground. Then, after four, after four all intents and proposal a normal session at the literature club, our dazed but not confused club president dismisses us without much fanfare. Sai is left in the room, still rushing to pack her bag. Natsuki dashed out of the room with me leaving her behind. So, when do I come to get a dummy? The rustling of Sayu's bag along with her strained grunts distracted me from Natsuki's needed disposition. Um, actually, I think I'm walking home with Sayu today. New boyfriend trouble so she comes to her ex? Huh, makes sense. I have a feeling that was an iro ironic comment. It's a good that she has a boyfriend though. No funny business, right? Right, coming from rich, coming from you. Excuse me. Nothing, nothing. Yeah, I thought so. I'll text you later, Marco. Sure, whatever. Natsuki runs away from me, but instead of going down the stairs to the exit, she runs towards the the other side of the school. Sorry, yawns and stretches as she walks out of the clubroom. Hey. Uh, her body tenses up the second I speak up. It's a st it. Yeah, it was a bit better. I can speak. It is though she became a, um, a stated family place in the door frame. Sometimes I forget to need to spell the word. Hey, wanna walk home together? Sh sure. Heavy winds continuously push me and sign you back as we make our way down the street. She cons constantly rubs her arms trying to s stave off the chill. We share another one of our roadless looks and get closer to each other, hoping to warm up. Even though we're closer to each other, there's still a distance between us. About Finn. Tell me about him. He's a nice guy, kind of quiet. He doesn't talk much because he likes to think before speaking. Pretty sure of himself and knows what he wants. From the moment he looked into my eyes, I could tell he was a genuine guy. He genuinely respects me and the people around him. And he won't get caught up in cheating. Okay, I get the matches. Messes. Matches. Okay, I get. Why can I spell that? Maybe it's because of my accent. Anyway, Mark, you don't need to apologize. I'm gonna apologize anyway. I'm sorry. Thanks. We stopped trying to resist the push of the winds. I should try and walk to her. Maybe she needs help figuring all this out. Don't, please. Why not? Does her react differently than you expect her to? Maybe she'll. So, she still needs to hear from someone that that what she's doing is kind of weird. Maybe she doesn't need to hear it. I don't get it. That's got things going on that you don't know about, and like what? The bed of, wait, what is that word? Lelux, lele, lele, Lelus? I would say Lelus. I don't know. Lelus by the park come into view as they slowly rolled away in fear of the upcoming winter. It's proper brown. Proper brown, that brings me a sense of <laughs> discomfort, but it helps me in gathering my thoughts. The kind of thing that I can't tell you about. And you know I'll tell you anything. Oh god. Sorry, his arms slowly stop rubbing together for warmth. Okay, but... But what about you, Marco? Why are you doing this? I know you know it's wrong, and I know you're not stupid enough to be doing this for... Funny. Maybe you think too highly of me. Marco, 
the one time we kissed, I was the one who had to push for it. You'll tell me that same guy is okay with this whole thing because he wants to get into bed with a girl? It's not this funny, you're right. My arms stop rubbing for a month and the cold winds cut through me. I, I care about her. I like her a lot, she's my friend, she's funny, she likes being around me and she likes me, that's cool, right? It probably helps that she has some spice. You're never going to let that go, will you? Nope. Our laughter relaxes and seemingly the wind relaxes as well, allowing us to move forward comfortably once again. I'm sorry I dragged you into this. Don't be, I'm glad you told me. I know I know what I'm doing is wrong, but I just want a chance to fig figure this out, okay? She so cuts her head as I look on in an addict way, anticipation. Okay, yeah, alright. Figure it out, I won't talk to her about it. Thank you, Sayori. Please, don't get hurt, okay? I hesitate to reply because I can't possibly find a way to guarantee that. I reply anyway. I won't. I owe you big time. Eh hey. <laughs> Since you do, can you get me some ice cream from the store? Ice cream? In this weather? My tummy wants it. Huh, you got it. I take a left, heading in the direction of the nearest uh, confidence store. Sorry, it doesn't follow my lead, uh, opting to keep walking in the du direction of our houses. What's up, man? I'm tired. I want to go home. Get the ice cream and chop it off out of my place, please. Fine, fine. I smile from cheek to cheek, happy that I still have Sawyer's support and despite doing something she doesn't approve of. Therefore, I head to the store and buy the ice cream I always tend to get. After giving Sawyer her large bucket of vanilla ice cream, I walk back home feeling exhausted from the day's events. I'm honestly ready to just kick back and relax for the rest of the week. The house key turns in the hall and the door opens, exposing me to a, a foreign environment. Inside is entirely silent. I can barely hear the soft breaths of the another person egging me to the living room. Mom? The breaths become more pronounced, but there's no response. I step, I step foot into the living room, only to be greeting with my mom sitting on the couch. Hey mom, what for lunch? Her head slowly turns to face me, the fear her methodically mo movements instill into me is on peril wait, on peril on parallel it parallel it? I can't speak didn't get to cook anything today. Oh, so we're getting takeout? No. I can practically see the room fog as my mother's presence controls the temperature to her personal whim, knowing that the next couple of minutes will be the closest thing to hell that I'll ever experience on earth. I try my best to maintain a sense of composure. Ha uh, ha, uh, we're not in today, are we? <laughs> no, your dad and I will. You, on the other hand. Oh, is there a reason or? Mom's weakness has always been a well timed smile for me, so I try to nervously put on. Put on on. Put one on. She remains unaffected. You tell me, Marco. Why does no one just tell me? Why? They remind me. Why do I always have to admit it? Because we like seeing you try to wiggle your way out of it. I screw through the list of screw ups that may have result in this reaction from mom. I've been pretty good lately. I've been keeping up with my schoolwork, so that's not it. The only thing that I've been doing this. Oh no. Is it about it? Your lady friend? Yes. I clean her muddy footprints fixed up in the kitchen after our baking session and you know what this, this is about. She points to the opposing couch, gesturing to me to take a seat. 
Not feeling like I have much of a choice, I said don't surrender to my fate. How oh, did you even hear about it? A little... A, li a little birdie told me. I will back for a second as I peel back everything that's wrong with that statement. Who could possibly be this little birdie? Last I checked, mom is the one to go zip. So it's not like she could have heard from Nat's mom. Even though she doesn't have a mom. So who could have been the one to tip her off? Uh, I actually don't know. I'm, okay. I'm actually kind of... Wait a minute. Damn it. That's why she sent me to... She sent me to get ice cream. So I told you, didn't she? That doesn't matter. No, Sayori, Sayori, Sayori. Ooh, oh no, no, <laughs> God no. I wasn't expecting this at all. What well, what a plot twist, Sayori. Literally telling Marco's mom about the funny thing he did with Natsuki. That is just effed up. Oh my god. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this at all. This is literally like out of nowhere. Oh my god. That doesn't matter. Of course she did. And for a good reason. She hands for Fora with her index finger pointing to me. Its pressure is palpable all the way from here. Why would you do something like that, Marco? Did you even wear condoms? What? Of course I did. I'm not stupid. I wouldn't go so far as to say that. Mom, I had... I had to play Uno with her. It's not a big of a deal. <laughs> That's not what this is about. I know boys your age are normally this stupid if your dad is anything to go by. Jeez, mom's roasting the boys. Threw him under the bus too. Why don't you? It's not about that. It's about your morals. I threw my hands in the air, trying to gain control of the situation. My morals? It was consenting, consenting Uno funny between two adults playing Uno. Adults? Yes, adults. What part of that is immoral? The part the part that includes the fact that she's seeing another boy? Huh? Is that what this is about? Why do you care? She sits back on the couch, looking me dead in the eye. Because I didn't realize... Uh, <laughs> wow, realize. Because I didn't raise my boy like that. I didn't... Raised my boy to go along with some Sir Red, all because she waved her body at you. Sir Red? Jeez, mom, that's really rude. A girl like that deserves a worse level. Damn! Mom, it's not like that. Then what it's. What's. Wait, what's it like? Because all I see is some girl who's trying to drag my son down to her level. I'm going to carry an explanation for it, but I find that my speech hits a wall whenever I try to elaborate any further. S uh, sensitive details are the only things that come to my mind, but they never reach my mouth. So, what's what's it like? Mom, Mom honestly, it's none of your business. It's none of my business? It's none of my business who my boy falls around with. Kind of, yeah. As long as you're under this roof, boy, it is absolutely my business. I slept over my attempts at thinking up a reputable way me down. I want to say something, but anything that'll come out will be beyond disrespectful. My face falls as well. Succumb... <laughs> Succumb... Hey, I can speak. Succumbing to the... Futility of it all. Pretty sure I spread that wrong again. Hey, don't look like that. I'm sorry, but you're kind of scary. Boo boo. Of course I am. I'm your mother. 
<laughs> murder is always scary, guys. You have to be careful, right? Whenever you're staying awake at least 12, 12 a.m., that means five nights at mom's is started. You have to be careful. Based on a true story. <laughs> you're not usually this scary because you're not usually doing something wrong. My only response to her in utter silence, she perks her lips and leads for her again, preparing to give out her judgment. Here's how this is gonna go. You're right, you're an adult, so that means I can't really stop you. I have st I have stated very clearly I don't approve of the relationship, but I am not going to treat you like a funny dog and try to pull you away from each other. Because you're an adult, it has to be your choice. But I have one rule, and that is, she cannot come into this house, period. But mom, no buts. That, that Sarah Red will not come into my house, understood? Understood. Good. You must he just breaks that tricky bag again. <laughs> the home of the heater em emanates through the quiet room. I still see her stare at me from the corner of my eye. May I be excused? In a minute. Okay. Your homecoming suit arrived, by the way. Finally getting a strike of joy after this joyless day, I stood up straight. Really? Yep. Does, does it look good? It does. Oh. Am I going to homecoming, mom? Of course you are. Nice, nice. So, uh, what is the best wife? <laughs> I'm joking. Mom stands up, grabs a hold of her purse, and prepares to leave for work. My stomach audibly grows as I yearn for the food I lost. Your plates, your plates in the fridge. Thank you, mom. I love you. I love you too, son. After going ahead and eating the generous plate of food in the fridge, I run up the stairs to finally lay eyes on my s suit. Oh my god. Jesus Christ, I wasn't expecting this at all. I wasn't. Alright, I'm going to end the video. I've been recording this for almost 50 minutes. Um, thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, this was actually one of my favorite parts I did to this video right now. One of my recordings. Because, uh, damn. So you're telling, uh, telling Marcus Baum about, you know, what he did to Natsuki. Playing Uno, you know, that's actually pretty illegal. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know what to say about that. Uh, I literally can't wait to play this again i mean to continue playing this i'm very very curious but yeah but i i got to end the video because i have to go to work tomorrow and you know how easy it is life but yeah uh again thank you guys for watching this video uh make sure to subscribe you're also free on subscribe if you don't like the content anymore um yeah and you make sure to uh, click the like button if you don't like the video click the dislike button because oh wait, wait youtube oh, freaking removes it never mind uh just don't click the like button i guess <laughs> if you don't like it and uh yeah see you guys in the next one bye bye <laughs>